Good evening, folks. It's Advent of Code time. It's just about five minutes out until the first puzzle is released tonight. Are you excited? I'm excited. Um, so once again, this year, I'm going to be streaming, uh, working through the solutions to uh, each night's puzzle in C++. Um, and I'll be doing the live streaming here on Twitch. Uh, I will also be uploading replay videos to my YouTube channel and um, posting the code to a uh, GitHub repository. So all the links should, you know, be in the description for wherever you see any of this. Okay. So looking at the website, we have about four minutes to go. I've got my development environment all set up here. Uh, going to be working in C++, working on Linux here. I have set up um, my whole tool chain with uh, the Klein compiler and LLVM. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code for the editor, which has really nice integration with Clang D for all those fancy IDE features. I've just put in a little skeleton here for our program uh, to solve the first part of the first day's puzzle. So I'm using the Bazel build system. So I just have the build rule here that describes how to build this executable for part one. And this is just a super minimal C++ program because we don't know what we have to do for the puzzle yet. So in my repo here, I also just have a little bit of utility code that I copied over uh, from previous year's advent of code. Uh, so I have this check thing. These are basically like assert macros, except they're on all the time. And uh, they give a little more um, you know, detailed information about where something happens if an assertion fails. And then I have this little IO library that can, uh, that just makes it simple to you know, read the whole contents of a file into a string. Uh, read line by line into a vector of strings, read comma delimited stuff into a string, because uh, as I found in previous years doing advent of code, a lot of times the puzzles will come with an input that is a text file in maybe one of these formats. And so um, just having some pre-written IO routines to read in and parse those files uh, can save some time. All right, we now have two minutes to go until the first puzzles come out. So uh, if you haven't done Advent of Code before, the puzzles tend to increase in difficulty as time goes on. So usually the first couple of nights we have something really simple that can be done in usually a few minutes. But um, as we get towards the end, you know, the last few days, sometimes you get real stumpers. And, you know, every now and then there's something where, um, I don't know, sometimes, like, uh, what stumps me sometimes is trying to remember exactly what, um, you know, stuff from, like, discrete mathematics or, like, uh, you know, modular arithmetic, you know, all the, all the fun mathematical tricks that you need to, to use sometimes um, in order to solve these puzzles. So uh, as we get on to that, you know, there may be some Googling involved, but probably not tonight. So we've got less than one minute to go until tonight's puzzle unlocks. I wonder how hard the site is going to get hammered uh, because last year we saw um, like it took a couple of minutes to actually get the first night's puzzle because everybody was frantically refreshing, you know, uh, on that first minute to to get the puzzle prompt right away, and there was a huge spat, a traffic spike on the website, as you might have expected. Okay, just a few seconds now. And away we go. Sonar Sweep. Minding out of business on a ship at sea 
and the overboard alarm goes off. Rush to see if you can help. Apparently one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent Slake you flying in the ocean. Before you know it, you're inside a submarine, the elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights, of course. If you have an antenna, you can use track keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna's signal strength by dis displaying 0 to 50 stars. Okay. We get our stars by solving puzzles again. So we're performing a sonar sweep. A small screen, we get our puzzle input. Each line is a measurement of the sea floor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Okay. Okay, count the number of times uh, depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. Okay. Let's get our puzzle input here. Okay, so really this is just a matter of um, using some I.O. So, for, so to read in the files and then just going through the list. So first thing I'm going to do is include my little I.O. library there. We should be... lines from file and we'll use argv1 which is the second argument for the program and that's going to give us a vector of strings of lines and then we can convert those into a vector of integers where we uh, by um, using another routine that I've pre-written which is parse integers. So we're going to pass up those lines, and then we should have our vector of integer depths. And now we just go, uh, so we're going to start one past the front because there's no previous measurement from the front. So we'll say um, from an iterator pointing to the second element of that vector of depths, so depth dot begin plus one because we're going to the second element uh, and then we go all the way to the end and we actually have to declare a variable to count all that up and so we'll say if the depth if the value of that iterator is higher then the then the um, the value of the previous position. Then we will increase the count, and then we will print that out. So uh, I just need to add. A dependency on my little IO library here in the build file, and then we should be able to build that. And run it against our input. Let's go ahead and actually see what our input looks like. Okay. Yep. Bunch of numbers. So let's go ahead and compile and run that against that input. So it's compiling, and it's saying 1832 is the number of times that the depth increases. So let's put that in and see if we got it. All right, that's one gold star. Continuing to part two. Okay, considering every measurement is as useful as you expected, there's just too much noise in the data. Instead, are consider sums of a three measurement sliding window. Okay. Uh, all right. Start by comparing the first and second three measurement windows. Measurements in the first window are marked A. Okay, so 
We go 199, 200, 208. And there's some of 607. Okay. Okay, so same thing except now we're doing um, sliding windows. Okay. Um, so, well, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just make a really quick commit um, in my repository here uh, of the part, part one solution. Then we will go ahead and make a copy of that part one solution and start working on part two. So part two here, very similar, except now instead of look, it, we're looking at um, windows of three. So um, the first time that we have a sliding window of three is actually going to be um, four past the beginning, because we'll have the previous window of three, which is the first three elements, and then we'll have elements um, one, two, and three, you know, counting from zero uh, as the second window. So we're going to change this to be plus four, and then the previous is just going to be the sum of um, The, uh, of four behind, three behind, and two behind, or, hmm. Yeah, I think that actually might be off by one. Uh, let's see here, because three behind, two behind, and one behind, and then the thing itself, yeah, okay. Gotta watch out for those off by one errors. They'll get you every time. So current is going to be very similar, except that it's two behind, one behind, and then the actual iterator itself. So if the current window is greater than the previous window, we increase the count. Okay. And yeah, we don't need to star that, don't need to reference that. So uh, we'll just make a quick build rule for this. It has the same dependencies. We'll just do another CC binary here for part two. Let's go ahead and run part two on our input. Okay, it has counted up 1858, which, okay. Let's go ahead and take that and see if that's the correct answer for day one. All right, so uh, that's two. Let's see, uh, I mean, we can take a look at the leaderboard. I highly doubt uh, we made it uh, on there. I think people probably went just at ludicrous speed. Um, but hey, yeah, okay, so we were, you know, cut in the top, uh, almost cracked the top 2,000, top 3,000 anyway, uh, for the speed on both of those, which we think is pretty good for, um, you know, talking our way through it as we're doing it. But uh, yeah, this is just, you know, pretty simple arithmetic here, you know, going through a list of numbers, definitely uh, sped up by the fact that I had that IO stuff pre-written. Uh, I definitely expect that the puzzles are gonna get a little bit harder, a little bit more interesting. You might, I might uh, get a little more stumped some days and you might, you know, just watch me sort of, you know, stare at the screen and, you know, toss off, you know, half-formed thoughts as I'm trying to figure it out. But uh, for now, I think we're off to a great start. And uh, I hope to see you again tomorrow night. As always, these videos are going to go up on YouTube. Uh, so you can always watch the replays. And you can always um, check out uh, the actual code in my GitHub repo. 
All the links you're going to go ahead and find in the description. Thanks very much. I'll see you tomorrow night.